Howdy YouTube parts. This is Jack Spade here coming to you from High Noon Leatherworks where we're going to show you step by step how to create leather goods from patterns all the way to the finished product. Stay tuned. Howdy YouTube parts. Jack Spade here for High Noon Leatherworks. We're back with episode 5 of the 1800's double loop holster. Last episode we did some decorative grooving, we did some burnishing on the edges and today we're going to go in and we're going to start doing some stamping. So stay tuned. Okay today we're going to use some stamping tools and there's all kinds of stamping tools you can buy. Uh, you can go to any of the leather makers, Tandy, Weaver, any of those guys have them. Uh, I buy most of my stuff at Tandy. Uh, I think they carry very high quality stuff. seems to last. Um, and I would get at least to start out, if I, if I was just getting started, I'd get me at least six different stamping tools. Uh, a variety. You can buy packs that uh, come as a variety pack so it has different types of stamping tools. I know a lot of guys that's been in it for a while they even make their own stamping tools so uh, they'll make very unique stamps for their leather. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to basically use these three stamping tool. Uh, one's uh, a mule's foot One's a flower decorative stamp, and the other one is a what I call a button stamp. So those are the three I'm going to use today. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get stamping, and I talked about the stamping tools, and then you'll have a mallet to hit your stamp with, and then uh, we're going to use piece of granite that I got. You can tell it's just a sink cut out. And what I did is I went to my local company that sells granite countertops and uh, I just went in and asked them if I could buy one of these and they said that uh, I had a dumpster full of them out back go help myself. So I was I told them I was more than willing to pay for it and they were said and I told them what I was going to use it for and leather crafting and they said no just go out there and help yourself so you might check with your local um, granite countertop companies and see if they have these out in the dumpster behind the building and ask them if they'll sell you one and they'll probably give it to you so that's what I'm going to use to do my stamping on you want a good solid uh, foundation to lay your leather on so that you get a good impression on your leather. Before we start, first thing we want to do is we want to do casing. So we want to case our leather. And the way you do that, we talked about that a little bit last episode when we did the burnishing and we moistened the edges. Now we're actually going to case the surface or the front edge of the leather with water. I just use tap water and a sponge. And I want to make sure that I I don't want to soak it, but I want to make sure I get the entire surface nice and moist. You don't want to miss any areas because um, you can get some discoloring or get some areas that almost look too toned if, if you don't get it covered evenly and then you go to do your dyeing or your staining you can get some areas that that don't look right so you want to make sure it's very even again not soaking wet you just want to get that moisture into that top surface of that leather that we're actually going to stamp into. If you need to, you can get some more 
water on your sponge. That's very even. And you notice it darkened it up. Well, if we wait just a very few minutes, this is actually going to come right back. And uh, you'll see it start lightening up in certain areas. And we don't want to necessarily start stamping while this is wet. I mean, as soon as we get done casing it. So, we want to wait until it starts coming back to that natural color. And as soon as we get to that, that'll make our stamping the easiest. So as, as we put a stamp in, at that point, it's going to remain in there. It's not going to want to rebound out of that, that leather. It kind of, that casing makes that leather lose its memory as far as bouncing back to the state it was in. So we want to case it with water, let it set for a few minutes until it starts, you see it start coming back to that natural color. Okay, you can see we're starting to get back to some natural color where we started before I actually moistened it. So we're going to go ahead and, and start. Um, I think I'm going to start with the flower decorative stamp and I believe I'm going to go on the outside of my decorative grooving that we did last episode and I'm going to go on the inside and then I'll show you how I'll switch that up with these other stamps to make it look different even though I'm using the same border type stamp. So I'm going to start right here in the corner and this is always a little difficult to do but I'm going to use my grooving line as my pattern line so that's what I'm going to follow around and right now I'm going on the outside and you want to make sure you hold your stamp firmly against your leather and you're going to hit it one time you want to make sure you give it a good swift hit and I'm going to walk it down and I'll put the stamp the end of the stamp on the last part so I'll just walk my stamp down that line and I'll continue that around the outside and then I'll come back Okay, now that we have that all the way around the outside, I want to make sure that you can see. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of my decorative groove line all the way around. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do with these two tools. So I'll start up in this corner again. I'll probably turn my piece around though so I can actually see, so I can use my line as a guide. And then I'll basically do the same thing I did on the outside line. Except now I'll follow the inside. And my tool is facing the inside. So you can see how I used that decorative grooving to make that straight one-eighth inch or 
three sixteenths, whatever it is, piece of leather all the way around, and that smooth piece stays there, and I put my stamping on the outside of it. So it gives it a really nice look. Come around the corner. Remember you want to use those grooving lines as a guide. You don't want to get away from that. Because just like cutting or grooving, stamping's very unforgiving. Once you whack that stamp with the mallet. It's in there. It's in the leather. It's not coming out. So, you want to make sure that when you get ready to hit that tool, it's positioned exactly where you want it to be. Just like anything else, the more you practice, the more you do, the easier it'll get, the better you'll get at it. But that casing at the beginning just makes it so much easier. And that image that you stamp in there wants to stay in there. And it's you don't have to hit it super hard. Now here's we come to a point here where I kind of I don't have enough room to put a full stamp in there so what I'll do is I'll pull my tool back a little bit and I'll hit a little lighter and what I'll do is that'll match those two or meet those two up and I'll still stay on my line so I don't have to give it a full whack I can move this tool back and forth, angle it back and forth, forwards and backwards. And what that does is it allows me to get a shorter image stamped in there if I need that. So now what I'm going to do with these other two, the mule's foot and what I call the button tool, is uh, I'll take one of them and I'll go around where each one of these stamps meet, I'll put a button stamp. On the outside, I'll do that on the inside. On the outside, I'll go around where each one of those first stamps meet, I'll put a mule's foot stamp. And it'll give it a really nice decorative look. All right, I'll complete the inside of this and then we'll come back. Okay, so you can see I've completed using what I call the button stamp. And I've just put one in between each one of the decorative stamps that I used before that went around. Now, I'm going to go on the outside and I'm going to use the mule's foot. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to make right where each one of the uh, first decorative stamps that I used going around, right where they meet, I'll use the mule's foot. Now sometimes I'll use it uh, this way. Sometimes I'll turn it 180 degrees and use it the other way. I think today that's, I'll use it with the rounded part toward the uh, groove line.
All right, I'll finish this and then we'll come back. So that completes my stamping on the holster side. So you can see if we fold that over the way it's going to be stitched, you can see the stamping, the decorative stamping around now. So I think I'm going to continue with the same theme on the skirt that way uh, when I do fold this over and get it stitched then that same type of decorative stamping is going to be on the skirt around the outside of the holster so again I'll start with this floral stamp and I believe I'll start on the outside and I'm gonna follow my decorative groove line all the way around just like I did on the holster so I'll finish this up and I'll be back So we've got the outside, we're going to turn around, we're going to do the inside and follow that groove line just like we did on the front of the holster. So I'll get started on that, I'll work my way around, and then I'll come back. So I'm done with that portion. I think what I want to do just to switch it up a little bit, because I'm still just going to use the same three tools, uh, I kind of want to show you what you can get, what kind of design you can get just using three simple tools. But uh, I used the button tool on the inside of this line and the mule's foot on the outside, well I'm going to switch it this time, so I'm going to use the button on the outside and the mule's foot on the inside. So let's use the button on the outside. I'll finish this and then I'll come back. button stamp going around the outside now I'll come back with the mule's foot and we'll take it and we'll turn it to the inside 
Um, I think I'm going to stick with the rounded part toward the groove line, just like I did on this one. Alright, I'll continue this all the way around and then I'll get back. Okay, so I've got the skirt done now, got the front of the holster done. Um, we could do some stamping on the straps, um, the loops, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave those smooth. I think that would kind of take away from the stamping we've already done. So, if you take a look. Now, gives you a pretty good idea what that's going to look like when we're completely finished. It's going to be very pretty. Again, I think we're going to finish this uh, in black. So we're done with our stamping now. And uh, we'll come back and take a look at it. When we come back to episode six, we'll start doing some dyeing, putting some color on it, and you'll see it'll make a huge difference. Try to get it to where you can actually see how it's coming together there with the stamping on it. Let me get my hands out of the way, but it's going to be a very pretty holster. So. Make sure you come back, follow on the next episode. I appreciate you being here, and we'll see you next time.